Hello everybody, welcome back to Big Water Daddy Fishing Rod Repair. And uh, no, that's not a fishing rod, that's a guitar. What we have today is going to be my attempt to completely restore and modify a guitar for my son for his graduation from college present, which will take place in about a year from now. So, um, He's a guitar player, I'm not, let's get that clear right from the start, and I'm not a guitar luthier, repairman, or anything of the above, but I've been watching Davey from Dave's World of Fun Stuff on how to do all these repairs and mods and, and fix em ups on guitars, and this is going to be an experiment of everything that I learned from Dave, from Dave's World of Fun Stuff. I'm going to do to this guitar to try to make it ready for my son for his graduation. So uh, never worked on a guitar before and uh, but I have done a lot of different things. I've done the fishing rod things and and uh, been a mechanic my whole career. I've done carpentry work and so I feel that with Dave's help from his videos I'm going to do this guitar and we're just going to have to see how it comes out. Uh, what this is is a 1965 Gibson Melody Maker. It's completely stripped and um, I didn't buy it this way. Uh, I bought it and it had finish on it and it was dinged and chipped and everything that you would normally see from a 1965 guitar but it had absolutely no hardware on it. Nothing. I got it. It's, a, it's an eBay purchase and um, so what I decided was it did have a couple of bad spots in it and I'll zoom in on, on one in particular there's just a nasty, nasty gouge here. This thing has got to be a quarter inch deep in the finish. And it had a lot of belt rash. Another term I learned from Davey, or the first term I'm using, learned from Davey. It had belt rash on the back, but I was able to sand most of it out and it only has one little divot that's, oh, you know, about 3 16 in diameter and probably that deep as well and uh, we're going to call that belt rash, uh, what was left of it. Um, since it had no hardware and when I looked into seeing how to, what it would cost to hunt down all the original stuff and, and put it all back to original 1965 Melody Maker, uh, put all them parts together, it would just be way out of sight, uh, way too much money for what you'd have in the, in, you know, when you're done. And uh, some of the things I learned from reading on, uh, you know, reviews on the internet and advice about these guitars, that to go back in with a tremolo bridge here um, of the same sort would, ju would just not make sense because everything I read, is, is, and people say they sucked and to stay away from it and do something else. Uh, as you can see, this is a D model, what I've learned, so it's, you know, dual pickup. And uh, we're going we're gonna to rebuild this thing. What I did was I chemically stripped all the all the finish off of it and uh, and it took three applications with chemical stripper to get it to get it all off of there and then what I did was is I, I sanded it with uh, 120 grit with an orbital sander and a vibrating sander and a lot of hand sanding all up in the horns and you know in the back of the neck and and uh, all the areas where I didn't want to affect the fingerboard, the fretboard, or nothing like that. So it took a, I got a lot of hours in getting it to this point, and then I went over it all with 220. So what we're seeing here is, is this is all sanded down to 220 grit at the time, and uh, <clears throat> from Dave's Dave's videos about truss rods, I put a wrench on here, uh, and I was able to turn it one direction. I could feel that the tension was loosening, and turn it the other, and and it was tightening. I didn't want to crank down on anything too crazy, you know, and, and, and do anything with the, you know, to see if there was relief uh, happening on this neck. Another term, uh, another term I learned from Davey. And uh, so I didn't really want to turn it that far, but I could tell that there was tension that was building and releasing when I was turning the nut back and forth for the truss rod. Uh, I'll flip it over so you can see the back side again. Okay, what we have here, uh, it had a very clear serial number. I was able to look that up and confirm that this was a Melody Maker 1965. Did that on the internet. Um, 
It had, uh, it's, the back of the neck is in really good shape. Uh, there's really no gouges or anything that didn't come out with very minimal sanding. Just, just touching things with the, uh, with the uh, 120 grit uh, orbital in these areas and the whole neck area I sanded by hand because you know you can't put something flat on the back of that radius or else you're going to mess it up. So it, it all came out, uh, like I said, except for the two spots I pointed out. The area uh, where the set neck is, another term I learned from Dave, and you're going to get real tired of hearing these, uh, these shout outs to Dave, but this is really where I learned it all. And just to see from somebody who doesn't know anything about guitars, just how much Dave has actually taught me from watching his videos, I'm going to call them out as we go. So this is a set neck, obviously, and um, there's no cracks, no, nowhere where it's loose, nowhere it's coming apart. It's, it's really, really tight, and, uh, which seems to be all good. Uh, up here in the neck where the head is, there's no fractures, nothing coming apart. Uh, you know, you look real close. It's all in good shape. And uh, this, is, uh, this is grain. That's not a crack. So, uh, you know, it, it looks pretty good. Uh, the things I don't know, and I would really appreciate if people chimed in that do know anything and give me any kind of advice, would be great, is... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I'll be able to capture this or not, but obviously there's going to be some fret wear and, uh, you know, from the, the little dents in there. And uh, I don't know, and I probably wouldn't be able to get the right angle. I don't know if the frets need to be changed or if they could be uh, leveled and crowned. More things I learned from Dave's videos. So uh, what I have on the way is all the, all the tools and equipment to, to, uh, to level and crown these and uh, I got them from Dave's favorite endorsement and I won't mention their name because we all know who they who he is who they are uh, yeah, he covers up their logos every chance he can so he doesn't give them a plug so but that's where I ordered stuff from and uh, and anybody that watches Dave's videos knows who I'm talking about and I'm just gonna follow suit and do what he does and not mention their name for whatever reason but anyway uh, that's it this is the this is the guitar and uh, I'll be making some more videos as we go along and uh, chime in give me advice uh, it's all welcome and uh, the only thing I like I said the only thing I purchased was uh, all the equipment to do the to do the fret work and that will probably be the next video the other thing is is that there's actually some pockets in the fretboard from this from string wear um, they don't be to, uh, appear to be extremely deep and I don't know if I can capture that or not, uh, but they do exist. Uh, what you're seeing here, this, this discoloration is where a little bit of the chemical stripper got on the fretboard and uh, um, I imagine when I clean the fretboard, because I haven't done anything to clean it, when I clean it all that will go away um, and then when I oil it, but there's, uh, there are some fret pockets, you can see a little bit of the, I mean some string pockets there where you can see where there's a little bit of wear but it's not extreme so I'd really appreciate if somebody could chime in and leave a, leave a message um, if there's anything I should do about that so so that's it and uh, it's about as much as I can talk about uh, this here strip 1965 Melody Maker that uh, we're gonna try to make it beautiful and it's not gonna be a fishing rod when it's done it's gonna be a guitar and hopefully it'll be functional and uh, we'll see you next time when I'm working on the frets.